I'm ready. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, the weird shit I just happened to have from work. <laughs> Yeah, you, you got a bunch of those. Um, <laughs> all right. So, hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> talk about Toy Story 4. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Toy Story. Um, <laughs> all right, so one of the things... It's been a few days since I've seen it. Yeah, I just saw it last night. Okay. So I, I have had a bit of time to process it. Okay. Um, I would say that in my conversations with people, I've definitely had... Uh, I've gotten like a, a a very wide range of what Toy Story movies people like better and worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and, probably uh, say what we prefer first. Then yeah, um, I would say in terms of the first three Toy Story movies, my ranking would be that the best one was number two, and then the first one, and then the third one is last. Honestly, I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah, so we're on the, pretty much on the same page. Good, good to know. I think I like three more than you did, because uh, yeah. I know you have your reservations about it, which I respect. Um, um, I mainly... It's weird because I know that some people... The reason that some people like Toy Story 3 is kind of the same reason that I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And it really depends on how you interact with those kinds of plot elements. Yeah. And um, I just feel that... Um, Toy Story 3 is really like a weird rehash of Toy Story 2 but without any of the real emotional charm and mm -hmm. like weight that the second one had and the real value of it comes from the you know the the really big moments are are isolated within themselves they're not really valuable because they have to do with the overall plot they're valuable because they have to do with themes that make sense to the that, viewer. That resonate. Yeah. yeah. Like when Andy gives away his toys at the end of the movie, that's a powerful moment for viewers, not because it's, you know, been built up to the whole movie or something or has something that leads to it. It's just a very powerful emotional beat that, you know, we can relate to as people who have loved these toys since the mid nineties. Yeah. And suddenly we were in a situation where he was giving them away and we were also kind of saying goodbye to them in a way. And mm -hmm. it was interesting in a way of, in, in a sense of letting go of your childhood or whatever. Yeah. And, um, the, it's, it's a good beat and I, I like it, but the part that really ruins the movie for me is the scene where all the characters just hold hands and accept death. See, I was okay with that, personally. I know, and uh, a lot of people are, and I don't understand why. Because well, I feel like it's a cheap moment, it's not earned, it's emotionally manipulative, and it's literally designed just to put you into this really freaky moment, and then just immediately pulls you out. With almost no stakes. Like, there's no gradual, like, oh, we have to escape, and, like, a fight to get out of there or anything. Mm -hmm. They just, they're trying to escape, and then they all give up, and then some deus ex machina shit happens. And, oh, you just, we just did that to make you freak out. But I remember seeing that moment and just being horrified. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, this isn't a moment that was touching. It was a moment where I was like, they're going to act, why is this in this movie? Uh, this is not appropriate for a children's movie. See, I'm as far as like children movies for me go, I've kind of followed the philosophy that uh, the director never any story did, which is like you can put your kids through anything as long as it has a happy ending. <laughs> uh, which I don't also, know about that. Which also explains a never ending story. <laughs> it really does. And, and to be fa let, let's be fair, I'm a big fan of the never ending story. And like, actually. was it uh, what, was the other one? He, like, Five goes to America. Or the, the first one. Five goes west. Five, no, no, that that's was the, the second one. I forget the first um, one was called. American Tale. That's American what it was. Tale, yeah. American Tale also kind of followed that same philosophy. Um, <laughs> no, there was there was a lot of especially Don Bluth movies in the oh 80s. Oh god, yeah. They Before followed, Rock a Doodle Do, or uh, Rock a Doodle. Rock a Doodle. I was close. Um, they followed a really interestingly dark approach to things, but the thing was that the darkness was pervasive to the whole movie. This is true. It made sense in the context of the movie. The dark moment, that moment in Toy Story 3 just felt really out of place and really just inappropriate. Uh, not to me, but I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I still have problems with it. Fair enough. And, and, it, like, and I get why you'd have problems with and, that. I, and when you're looking at it as an imitation of Toy Story 2, which it essentially is... Um, yes and no. 
Um, like I def there is definitely a lot of familiar story beats between the two yes. movies for sure. Um, that being said, I do think there is I the third movie is really about moving on in general and figuring out like yes. what what you bring with you and what you leave behind. Yeah, and that is a big thing. The third one, I think that does carry through even with the the darker moments in the movie. I still think that theme carries through. I'm, I'm not saying uh, that it doesn't carry through. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it would have been a better movie without that moment, and it mm -hmm. feels like they used those moments to give the movie an unearned gravitas that. Mm -hmm. Toy Story 2 really earned through the story beats and through the story and through the character development. I mean, if I have to choose between 2 and 3, I'm going to choose 2 every time. Like, that's not, no, that's not 2 is question. indisputably, like, a it's, perfect it's, movie. Yeah, I agree. It's really incredible. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, but like, oh, there's something else I was going to say. But I, yeah. It'll come back to me later. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, um, oh, I remember now. Uh, I remember, uh, you remember, you remember Rob? KHS? Sure, yeah. Uh, well, I remember you telling me a great story how he, I guess he pirated Toy Story 3 one time, but it was an edited version that ends on that dark scene. <laughs> 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 like, they, they, like, they are all holding hands, and they, they're looking at the fiery pit, and then it just fades to black. <laughs> and he said, like, for years, that's how I thought that movie ended. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like, that's funny. Like, like, dude, there's a whole th like, there's a whole part. And he goes like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. No, um. Yeah. See, that's. And here's another thing to give you, like, it, I, I think it. If you imagine the movie just ending at that moment, it's kind of really fucked up. Yeah. It feels out of place. Mm -hmm. Like, I, to me, it still works okay, but again, I, With I them get... just dying in the pit? <laughs> I mean, we... that, that works okay for you? I mean, if you just does want to, like, just make every... Does it feel like it makes sense in the context of the rest of the story? <laughs> I mean, that would just... end there. But that's uh... my point. Like, if, if you end there, it feels really weird and out of place, and there's nothing after that moment to make that moment seem better. I mean, you can make so... that movie argument at any movie, though. Like, again, going back to Neverend's story, what if the movie just ended after Artex died? <laughs> That's in the first 20 minutes. It'd be a very short movie. Yeah, but it's in the first <laughs> 20 minutes. I'll, I'll give you a better one. What if right. the movie ended after Fantasia just gets blowed the Yeah, there up? you go. That's probably a better yeah. one. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't mind that movie. Because I feel like it's a dark story that ends on a dark... It's a fucked up movie. I rewatched it recently <laughs> in a theater. I played like, the werewolf in a play once, yeah. yeah that's weird. Uh, <laughs> but but if you watch the movie, the whole movie touches on these themes throughout, and it would make sense for it to end with the down note. It only cut the like, last scenes of Kid going, What the fuck? As he's looking at the book. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, Toy Story 4... <laughs> <laughs> We're here to talk about that. Um, this happens every time we do like a, have to do like a sequel to anything. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I also find that the the retrospectives are kind of interesting. They are. I agree. Like the but conversation not... about the larger scope is is kind of a little more captivating than you know us us talking about a movie. Not to say that we're not very interesting and our opinions aren't very interesting to watch and and worth coming back to and liking and subscribing. But um, <laughs> you know, I very subtle, very nice. With that, with that. With that context, let's talk about Toy Story 4. Yes. Um, I kind of had mixed feelings on this movie for a good chunk of it. Like parts I thought yeah. worked really well. Uh, other parts just didn't mix me as much as I wanted them to. Mm -hmm. Like, I, uh, to me, kind of felt like Finding Dory, where it's like, I felt like I just didn't like it as much as a lot of other people did. Uh, that's not to say it's bad, and this movie's definitely better than Finding Dory. Um, but, like, that being said, like, there's some pacing issues, and yeah. there's some parts I definitely feel like it's trying to recreate like the feeling of the original and it just doesn't work as well uh, I feel like some parts work order. some parts work better yeah uh, like I, I feel like I really like how they recontextualized the relationship between Woody and uh, Bo Peep pretty much in yeah. the first like no that was great at first 10 minutes like that like in one scene barely any dialogue completely recontextualizes their relationship. Like, I really like that, especially yeah. since Bo Peep was such a nothing character for the first three movies. Um, like, she was no, there, but no, she no, no. was mostly just kind of there. She was she was sort of there in the first one. She was much more there in the second one. And she literally wasn't there in the third one. This is very true. That's uh, part of why Toy Story 4 bases the whole thing around her. I find that really interesting because that was a big question from a lot of people. Mm, well, I to, like, you know, where the fuck did Bo Peep go? I like and that they actually gave her much more of a character in this movie. Yeah, they, uh, it was really interesting to see that they took that plot hole and were like, hey, this is why it happened and let's make it relevant to this one. I, mm -hmm. I thought that was really cleverly done. Yeah. Um, 
they did a really good job of capturing... I feel like they did a better job at capturing the charm of the originals than the third one did. See, that's where I kind of disagree, though, because to me, uh, it goes into the fact that, like, for the most part, the characters aren't really given a lot to do outside of, like, maybe four. And that, to me, like, that was kind of the problem with, like, that's what's <clears> in the first uh, three movies didn't really have a problem with. It felt more like an ensemble piece. Uh, well, it's it's weird because the, uh, let's see, the first movie mostly took place in in Sid's house in Andy's room. Yeah, with the the whole back and forth between that and then the moving truck finale, and oh yeah, the pizza place. Yep. Um, so that had an, an, a nice variety of environments, and then the second one was just sprawling by comparison. Yeah. Um, and the third one basically took place in the daycare. Yeah, but it was still about, like, the family unit. Like, it's still, like, everyone still felt like they had an important part to play in the narrative and sure. the story and the themes. Sure. Uh, this one doesn't really have that. Like, majority of the characters are on the RV for a majority of the yeah. film. Well, this uh, movie's about Woody. It, and like, it, It's I, about Woody, period. I get that. So this is a case where, like, yeah. it's not necessarily... I mean, I didn't really care for that too much, but it just it takes some getting used to when you're used to when you're used that. to it being, like, more of a, a an ensemble piece. I, I definitely felt... It took me a bit to get used to how Buzz was used in the movie. I did not like how Buzz was used in this movie. And at the same time, I had to remind myself that there were large chunks of the other movies where... Buzz was out of commission for whatever reason. I mean, for fuck's sakes, he was basically like a, a, a Spanish-speaking flamenco dancer. And honestly, that, the that, that bothered me about three, too. Yeah, so, no, like, I, I didn't, really didn't like that I at didn't all. really care for... I mean, like, I thought the jokes were funny, but I was like, yeah. well, I want, like, Buzz as a character in the movie. Yeah, and uh, this was kind of better, but he also felt weirdly stupid, even Yeah, though. like, that's what kind of baffled me, too, because, like, even, like, the last couple... Like, Toy Story 2 and 3 kind of established him as, like, the right-hand guy. Like, he's smart. He knows what he's doing. He's the yeah. competent one. Yeah. And here he... He, like they kind of like Drax him up, and I didn't really get why. Uh, they, 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 and it felt like Tim Allen just did not give a shit either. Well, the, uh, the whole the whole inner voice thing was kind of funny and interestingly utilized, and mm -hmm. led to a couple of great jokes. But at the same time, yeah, it felt like uh, Buzz was kind of underserved. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, as I was watching it and feeling like I had a problem with it. I also kept reminding myself that Buzz was never the main character. Buzz was always kind of the foil to to Woody. And while in the first two movies he did have a much more central role, you know, there's only so much you can do or expect. And I felt like in this movie he definitely was meant to be more of a sidekick to Woody. It's like, and that's fine. Like, I have no problem with him having that role in the movie. It's yeah. more like it felt like they deliberately <clears throat> dumbed him down in a way that didn't really make much sense sure. to me. Yeah, uh, no, and I agree with that. Yeah, so I'm like that. I mean, that, that bothered me because like, I liked Buzz's character through two and three when he wasn't doing the flamingo dancer thing. Uh, like, I, again, he seemed rationally. He was the clear-headed one. Like, he was. That's why I made him like a good supporting uh, like partner. Yeah. To uh, to Woody in the in the two and three. Yeah. Uh, so the fact they kind of took the down to like now I suddenly don't know what an inner voice is. I'm like you motherfucker. You guys known each other for like twenty fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a whole thing where he's like, I uh, he's I, I could see what you mean by, uh, by draxed him up. Like he really <laughs> is just like. He doesn't understand the concept of a conscience or a thought process, I guess. Yeah, or an inner he voice. Just, it was like, the, he just sees when? something and goes for it. And he's like, he's like, since when? He's, like, he's generally been stimulus response, though. Um, even even when he was the good guy and a good companion, a good hero, he is generally just the. But he literally has a line dude. in two when he hears like the other bu Buzz talk all the nonsense, and he goes, "Was I? Oh, tell me I wasn't this deluded." <laughs> 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 Which is uh, a line in two, so it's like it feels you go from that to this. Yeah, uh, feels a little jarring, and just felt like Tim Allen wasn't trying as hard in this one as he was in the other movies. Yeah, no, I can give you that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll agree with that. Buzz was definitely a weaker character, but uh, I I was willing to let that slide for how strong of a character Bo Peep was mm -hmm. and how consistently that conversation with Woody kept evolving. No, and I like I like the themes, I like the message it had, I like the idea of um 
kind of like rediscovering your purpose. Yeah. After your, your either your plan for your life is fulfilled or your plan falls apart. Mm -hmm. And I like the the message of you can rediscover your purpose. It doesn't have to end when this ends, or it yeah. doesn't have to end because this doesn't work out. Yeah. You can find a new purpose and you can find a way to be happy after everything yeah. changes. And I like that message. I think it's a really strong message. It was it was interesting to to think about the metaphors that they were playing with. And there's definitely exactly some parental themes apply. going on. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's definitely some parental themes going on, um, and there's definitely an interesting validation of both sides of that conversation. Mm -hmm. Like as as both characters are arguing with each other, and as both characters are having a difficult time figuring out what they want and how to move forward, and uh, you know what what bothers them about certain things. Um, it doesn't condemn anyone. Yeah, it doesn't both of it, them. Yeah. Both of them have their own philosophies on it, and as the movie changes its mind on where it wants what character to go, it makes sense. No, it does. There's it, a good progression. Yeah, it, it makes sense with the character progression. It makes sense with you know the context of the situations and how the plot is progressing. Like it, the, it really does feel like the characters discover new things. Yeah, and evolve in their viewpoints in ways that don't feel forced. I agree. Uh, and again, I, I like that it, it ties back to the idea just that you're not tied down to what you think your purpose was supposed to be. Yeah. And that's malleable. You can change that and that's okay whatever that means for you. Yeah. Because uh, like there's some characters mm -hmm. who think they have what purpose that doesn't work out with Uncle Trank, not too much into spoilers. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, and like they discovered like, oh well, like this, it didn't work out with this person but there's another person that'd be just as, ha like be, be happier with me in their life. Yeah. And like those mess, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, or uh, like just case like, well maybe I'm better off now my, or what case is going a little into spoilers uh whereas like okay my purpose for andy was fulfilled he moved on i did my job and yeah. this and like i'm trying to work with this new kid but it's not working out as well than it did before and i'm struggling how to deal with that uh <laughs> i can we, can we take a moment in the middle of all this to just appreciate forky <laughs> <laughs> just tony hale as forky and and for, Forky, I'm like a he, he big a good Tony job. Hale fan. I'm uh, a big I, Tony Hale. I'm fan. not too familiar with his work. He uh, was he was Buster in Arrested Development. And it, okay, see, oh, okay, 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 okay. And yeah, oh, doesn't get enough credit. Jesus Christ, I forgot his name. That's that's how mistreated he is in Veep. He is so mistreated in Veep that I I've forgotten his name even now. <laughs> but he is. He is one of the most abused and dismissed <laughs> and underappreciated and yet eternally lovable and loyal characters. And it's so sad. Um, God, the Veep finale got really sad in the last 10 minutes. Um, I still gotta watch Veep. <laughs> Veep is, uh, it has its ups and downs. Season 6 is definitely the weakest. Mm. And Season 7 is definitely just trying to get it done, but it mm. does better than Season 6. But it, 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 it is one of the most <laughs> sociopathic brutal just ugly fucking tv shows in terms of just people being mean and ruthless to each other <laughs> damn and it is all about the government and it's it's kind of brilliant because um what was it i uh, i forget what politician it was that said um it's actually a pretty accurate portrayal of how politics work oh. behind the scenes. <laughs> that makes me sad. <laughs> oh no, it's 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 a rough show. Oh, um, but yeah, anyway, um, the 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 biggest thing that makes it okay is that damn near nobody on the show is worth rooting for. <laughs> One of those, you and, hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, and the only two characters that you might have actual sympathies for. They're just gonna get ground up in the machine, and it happens through the whole show, and oh. you just kind of roll with it. Uh, well, now I'm sad. So Forky, <laughs> but but Tony Hale as Forky is one of the most <laughs> trash. Yeah, trash. <laughs> just he, he the the. The spork is literally horrified at being alive <laughs> and is just trying to throw itself into the trash because it's trash and it wants to be trash. And it brings this really weird, like, 
I don't want to say Suicide Watch. (laughs) Not so much that, but it has this very strange existential question going on in it. Which it does address in a post credit scene. It does, which I loved. (laughs) Um, I mean, mostly in that, yeah, yeah, guys, we're never going to tell you how this universe works. Thank God. Yeah, Um, there's definitely a moment where they, where they, they become blatantly self-aware that the the rules in this universe don't fucking make sense. (laughs) Um, But... But he basically just wants to keep throwing himself into the trash because it's where he belongs because he's trash and he's made out of trash and he wants to be with the trash. And um, there's the, the moment that it clicks for him is actually really sweet. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it comes after Woody telling him his life story. Yeah. <laughs> Only to eventually have Forky be the one to connect the dots for him and him be like, oh. Oh shit! <laughs> it's, it, it's great. Wait, which, which part do you connect to that? I forget. Where he's walking on the road with him. Oh yeah. And and they figure out what they want and and uh, and oh and when he's talking to Gavin, he's oh, yeah, like, like I, I don't think he ever got over it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, this boy had Andy, and then he's got a new girl. I don't think he ever got over him. Yeah. No, it's it's it does a lot of very interesting things with the overarching plot. Yeah, and it I does do, tie into the overall theme of like rediscovering your purpose and all that. I, I did. I, I did enjoy the fact that they had, you know, the the plot with Gabby was interesting. It was uh, Gabby, who's kind of like, I'm I'm not gonna lie, uh, I do miss villains who can just be villains in Disney movies. That being said, I did like what they did with Gabby. I really like where they brought that. Yeah, so because that, in the end, it, the way that came back around was the, the, the when that sympathetic moment happens mm-hmm. you kind of get it yeah no weirdly so you, you that do. moment makes sense and it kind of hurts your heart like when and, you build this imagery of what you think your life's going to be like if you yeah. just do this or do this one thing or fix this one thing about yourself well, and it's, then it doesn't it's not happen. even that it's not even that it's 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 the moment where she's talking to Woody yeah to try to get him to not run away yeah 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 like that moment for me was really that, that was heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, that, that being said, the moment, the moment of the introduction, though, is like one of the most sinister Pixar moments I think I've ever oh seen. God. No, I love... <laughs> okay, so she has this, this, this squad of ventriloquist dummies. Who are just terrifying. Which is literally one of the characters said. Forky says it, I think. I know, I was like, <laughs> how is it we saw the horror movie with the talking doll and these are scarier? Yeah. No, it's, it's, I just love... I just love their the way that they emote. Or just move even, in general. Even <laughs> yeah, they move like hanging limply and stuff. Yeah. And so we see even, like three of them like coming down like a like a tiny corridor. Their, like, their hands, their Christ. hands hang like this, like they do on actual ventriloquist dolls. <laughs> so even when they're walking, they're flopping around really disconcertingly. <laughs> and um, there's there's even when they're normally hanging out and emoting, I love that they're they're just unsettling and they play that for humor. Like they do. even if even if one of them is just doing something that's that's innocuous and kind of just casual, it's just <laughs> it's brilliant. It's and there's yeah. a specific moment where for where they're running away from them and Forky just goes, "Oh, they are terrifying." <laughs> It's, uh, oh man, I love ta- that. Can we talk about my favorite supporting characters, though? Which one? Can we talk about Duke Kaboom? Duke Kaboom! <laughs> I loved Duke Kaboom. <laughs> Duke Kaboom. He's the great. only one that like made me just laugh my ass off. <laughs> 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 Oh, or it's hey. more like he goes into like his tragic backstory. Like, yeah. I need to get back to my kid. My kid. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and yeah, Keanu no. Reeves. God bless the man. Uh, Wait, just... Keanu Reeves is Duke Kaboom? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Like, oh, I gave, great. I've given him some shit over the in the past over his acting career, but that man is a saint, and oh, he is man. trying so hard here. <laughs> uh, I love, I love that Duke Kaboom's performance is. Cheap easy enough to be totally worthy of of Keanu just, oh, just yeah. getting here just going like I'm Duke Kaboom <laughs> and, and you can, the funny part is you watch like press stuff with him he is so damn excited about it yeah because you get to be in Toy Story who doesn't fucking love Toy Story and there's just, ador- there's just the most adorable like little video of like they get like let the actors play around like a little like makeshift carnival where they pick out toys yeah, yeah. and then uh, like Keanu Reeves runs up to the camera and just goes Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> As he's oh, holding like awesome. a little stuffed Buzz Lightyear. And then uh, someone's like, who'd you pick? And he goes, I picked you, Duke. He's like, that's awesome. 
<laughs> he's just so happy to be there. So That's like, great. And I was like, all right, well, let's keep my expectations tempered because Keanu Reeves is a good guy, but his acting is always kind of hit and miss. So it was like, depends on the role you put him yeah, in. Yeah, he's, he's he's good at a very specific kind of role. Yeah. But like, here is like, he's really funny. <laughs> That's kind of why I love him in the John Wick movies, because if yeah. you watch them, it's not good acting. It's over the top. It's cheeseball as fuck. It's But he's good at cheeseball. He's really good at it. He's perfect in that role, and it just it fits. And and I don't know. I love it. No, <laughs> the yeah, part I in the third one just, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that right. One of the best moments. But, um, yeah, it's... it's 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 a charming movie. It it does for the parts that it does miss, I can easily forgive it because the parts that it mm. pulls off, it, it it feels like it very specifically narrowed its scope to mm -hmm. focus on certain things, and in doing so, sacrificed some other things, and did pretty well with what it kept in scope. Like it mm -hmm. did what it was trying to do, and it did it well. I agree with that. Um, that being said, like if I had to say like which one I thought was the overall better package, I would still say three as far as like pacing and contextualization and like just overall like for the entire I, for the entire thing. I still thought like Toy Story three was better paced. I and think Toy Story three might have been a better film, constructed yeah. movie, but in terms of. Being a better movie, like just in terms of an experience and the emotional moments connecting and feeling like a continuation of the story arc, I, I felt like this one was better in that sense. I haven't decided yet. Like that's, I'm still kind of torn on that. I think I need to go back and watch uh, Toy Story 3 again. I, uh, I put this between 1 and 3. I have, like I said, I'm not sure yet. I, I, I think I have to go back and watch them yeah. to like really analyze it more because it's been a long time since I've watched Toy Story Same. 3. And also uh, it's kind of hard to compare things to Toy Story 1 because that was such a revolution. It was. And, and like, such a unique creation for its time mm -hmm. and definitely a product of the 90s. Yeah, there's definitely parts uh, that have not aged particularly well. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas Toy Story 3 came from the Finding Nemo era where I really just did not like most Pixar movies that were coming out. Oh uh, really? I don't like Finding Nemo. You don't like Finding Nemo? I do not like Finding Nemo. I like Finding Nemo. I think that it's just... I don't think it really does much with the characters. I feel like it's one note throughout most of the movie. Mm. And I feel like it's really there just to show you the colors. I don't know if I agree with that, but... She waits around on that. No, but that's my point. Like, it's yeah. just... It, it, it just doesn't connect with me. And everyone fucking loves it. Um, I think the movie has some pretty solid arcs. About loss and uh, ad adapting and uh, pushing your limits. Uh, I, I think again, I feel like it's a bunch of moments put together that feel like they're supposed to result in something, but they don't connect in a way that actually results in the thing. Um, um, I agree, disagree on that one. And I uh, like, I think Up is better than that. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, um, that, like, like Up is just a fantastic <clears throat> movie. I haven't seen Finding Dory. Eh. Um, not a big fan of Monsters Incorporated. That was never one of my favorites. Yeah, same. Um, and and like, I, 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 I liked was, Ratatouille. Ratatouille's great. Um, honestly, Ratatouille is one of the best movies Pixar's ever made. I agree. Um, but when you're comparing all these things to to like Toy Story three, I still feel like Toy Story three kind of falls more into the Finding Nemo camp than the Up Wally. Mm, I, I can see where you camp. I can see where you're coming from. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I guess it just really depends on what you... It just, yeah. All Pixar movies are driven by emotion, first and foremost. Yeah. It just depends yeah. on what you get out of it. Yeah, and uh, that's the big thing. When it came to Toy Story 3, I really did not get anything close to the level of enjoyment and gratification I got out of it, out of uh, Toy Story 2. Yeah, and that's perfectly fair. So... Um, and like I said, no, I, no matter what, I'm still going to agree Toy Story 2 is a better movie. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I will yeah. definitely agree on that. But uh, the thing I like about Toy Story 4 is that in tone... I feel like it was closer to the original two than three was, and that's mm -hmm. why I like it better. Fair enough. Um, like to me, for all I, its flaws. Yeah, like to me, like the flaws uh, are ki for me are kind of harder to ignore. Uh, I can acknowledge what I did did very very well, but for me, like um, it took it just took me longer to get there mm -hmm. than I wanted it to. Um, not in a way like oh they like oh the build up took too long or anything like that. So much as it kind of felt like it jumped around until it got to the point, uh, largely in the first act. Um, and to me, that the, I don't want to say jarring, but it felt a little disjointed, and for like 
the first act until Bo Peep showed up. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that was kind of the case of like, okay, kind of like, where is this going? It's kind of like, yeah, well, that was all set up. A lot of the characters aren't really doing all that much. And uh, it, that, those parts are just, that made it hard for me to get into it than I wanted it to. Which I'd say the, what came after is bad. I, by I was, imagination. It's more like uh, it didn't pull me in um, as much as some of the other movies did, even three. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say that the other ones got going faster. And the setup took longer in this one, but the moment that I I was entertained enough throughout the rest of the movie, and the 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 point where it started to properly click for me was when they went into the antique shop. Mm hmm The second time, yeah. And no, uh, the first time. Okay, man. And then the ensuing yeah. chaos. Um <laughs> What do you think about Keen Peel is wanting to murder everyone? <laughs> that was oh, I, I can't believe I forgot to bring that up. Keen Peel, as an addition to the movie, initially they feel very intrusive because mm -hmm. they are basically Keen Peel stuck into a Toy Story movie. Mm -hmm. But as the movie progresses, <laughs> yeah. they kind of they grow on you. They grow on you, and they they sit better into the overall plot. And there's definitely moments where you could tell that Kim Peel had some measure of influence on the script. <laughs> yeah. Like when he says, like, I know how to get the keys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that whole sequence of things was hilarious to me. I, I, I loved it. Uh, like uh, the rule of threes worked really good for that particular sequence. Yes, uh, yes it did. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and, and then I get the keys. First, attack her in the face. Second, roll a ball, then attack her in the face. So like, roll, the roll, 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 play yeah, three. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> Wait till she gets home. Has a drink of wine in the bathtub. And then when she goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the credit sequence scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where it just very quickly, clearly becomes something where it's, it's not, it, it's clearly not real. Mm -hmm. But... As it's happening, there's this progression where, where you go from wondering what's happening to to being like, oh, whoa, wait. And then it starts getting ridiculous. You're like, oh, okay, this isn't real. And you realize you're just indulging their ridiculous fantasy. And it gets crazier and crazier until it goes right back to just showing them standing in the booth, just going like... <laughs> and... Pew, 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 and just, you and since you didn't know it was uh, Keanu Reeves, you, I, don't, I bet you didn't realize they snuck in a whoa in there. I I did not realize that at the time, <laughs> but I totally get it now. Um, um, I will mm. say like one more thing. Uh, the part I think got the most emotion out of me in the entire movie is the poor G.I. Joe who just wanted a high five. He just wanted a high five. <laughs> just left hanging. Did I you stay after the credits? I did. Okay, so good. I, I got that emotional payoff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, no! <laughs> It's like were they making fun of that like the the Arctic GI Joe that everyone hated whatever yeah. his name was? Yeah. Okay, that was supposed to be him. It was the Arctic uh, one. Yeah. That one kept on getting left hanging. I don't think it was the exact one. Like I think it was most. No, like, but it was the white camouflage yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. The snow environment one. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Just making sure. And apparently that was Carl Weathers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Weathers got a chance to be in a Toy Story movie for two seconds, and he took it. <laughs> he, but he still had an arc. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although I do love that if you have Carl Weathers in any kind of military uniform character, it is an immediate callback to Predator, technically. So, <laughs> anyway, that's a spin-off movie. He just <laughs> but gets the Predator toy. Toy Predator just turns into toy soldiers. Yeah, I was gonna say just toy soldiers, basically. Uh, oh shit! What? Toy Soldiers did the Chucky concept better than Child's Play did. The new one or the original? The new one. Yeah. Toy Soldiers is a better version of the new Child's Play. It, it, uh, I mean, technically, Child's Play is a better version of the Child's Play concept than Child's no, Play. No, no, no. Uh, Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. With the whole, like, toys just taking over different kinds of toys and attacking people? I thought they were all just actually alive. I thought that was the whole thing. Yeah, but I'm saying in terms of having that be what happens as opposed to just having one toy. Yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> weird. Toy Story was a weird movie. Yeah, it was. It has not aged well. It, no. No. That was like late 90s, right? Yeah, there was a lot of very, very sh unabashed child endangerment. For late quite a 90s while. was a dark time for film. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Toy Story 4, pretty good. I enjoyed it. Go see it. It's yeah, worth it. I liked it. Like, Absolutely. It, it's not my complaints. That's all I thought was pretty good. I still recommend it. Yeah. 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 yeah.
did you get the arc? I'm, I'm just curious, because I was originally going to write the trailers, and I started some, getting some weird ones, and then I just had to write them down. because Which just, ones? Uh, did you get Arctic Dog? No. Oh, no, I actually did the thing where I arrived right as the trailers were ending. Son of a bitch, man. In time for the Dolby masturbation to happen. Uh, yeah, you got you missed some weird-ass trailers. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I'm okay with it. Uh, there's Arctic Dog Spies in Disguise, where Will Smith turns Spies into, in Disguise, turns I've seen the trailer into a for. Pigeon. Which is <laughs> weird, looks weirdly delightful. Uh, then Honestly, I kind of want to see Spies <laughs> in Disguise. It looks stupid. Uh, it looks so stupid that I really want to see it's it. It's a Blue Skies movie, though, so I'm not going to have my hopes oh. uh, yeah, Maybe. And did you get the tr oh I forget you went did you get Trolls 2 trailer? I did see that one, yeah. Oh god. Yeah. I hated the first one. I yeah. hated it so much. <laughs> yeah. Ugly Dolls is better. Ugly Dolls it, it, as I look back on it, more and more I'm okay with Ugly Dolls. Me too, honestly. It's kinda weird. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's a, harmless. It's it's a weirdly inoffensive and well messaged film for, you know, all of its weird, you know, look at my glutes moments and stuff. It definitely has Oh uh, yeah, that was a thing that happened. It definitely <laughs> has like an overall better vibe than most kids' movies. I think it's also enhanced by the fact that we saw Secret Life of Pets 2 right after we saw it. And it was just <laughs> in comparison. Contrast in quality. In comparison. Oh, God. Like that, like the fucking. I can't wait for Lion King to come out just so I can stop seeing the trailer. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even see Men in Black. I never got around to it. I didn't know if I wanted to. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. So, all right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, next week is. What is even comes out next week? Or today, I guess. Today, what is today? Uh. Friday. <clears throat> things things come out next week or today. I don't know, I'm tired. It's been a long ass week. I mean, we could just end the video and figure that out. Yeah, later. let's do that. Thank you guys right. for watching. Oh, Annabelle comes home, and yesterday, and Anna. I do kind of want to see Anna. I honestly have no interest in Anna. I do, just because I want to see an empty action film. It's more like, I've been teased that with two blonde Russian spies, and I got something really weird instead, both times. Which which ones? <laughs> uh, Atomic Blonde, and uh, not the one that sounds like the Black Widow, but it's not. Red Sparrow? Red Sparrow. I, I've heard that referred to as rape, the movie. It is, there is a lot of fucking rape in that movie. <laughs> uh, no, here's here's the kicker for you. Um, Anna is directed by Luc Besson. I'm pretty sure. Huh. I'm assuming that you you know enough about Luc Besson to know who that is. A little bit. I've, I have to look at his familiar. Little bit? I'm sure I've seen his work guys somewhere on the top of my head. <laughs> Shameful. I'm not good with Shame names. Yes. Oh no, he's producer. Is he directed? Well, there goes that hope. Nope, nope, nope. Don't you take that from me. Writer, yes. And director. Yes, he directed okay. it. Okay. Well, <laughs> Luke Besson. Alright. Luke Besson, also known as the man behind Leon the Professional and the Fifth Element. Who has not made a good movie since then. He has made plenty of good movies since then, you fucking charlatan. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I feel like I've seen some, like... I mean, I'm gonna look at his IMDb, because I know I've seen some shit from him recently that I did not care for. I mean, I will say he hasn't done anything significant since, like, Lucy. Oh, Lucy God, I... Lucy. That's what yeah. I'm thinking of. Lucy yeah. was great, uh, from everything I've heard. Um, but I also heard that uh, Valerian was a much maligned film. Oh, God, Valerian. I heard Valerian wasn't that bad. It was weird. You probably would have liked it. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. Like, the comic it's based on. You didn't see it. That's all I could... It's more like, hey, for a character... I, I didn't read the book, but for it's like, apparently, people, <laughs> people got pissed off because, like, yeah, here's this charming guy played by, like, like the most uncharming actor in Hollywood. <laughs> Miscasting is one thing, but but the fact that they, they put together this film and the people I know that enjoyed the comics liked the film, which is not that common. So. Yeah, so we had, like, Valerian, The Family, Arthur Three. Arthur Arthur was, like, his side project for kids. I don't think we can really count those. Yeah, we made four of them. Angela uh, was good. Angela was good, if small and charming. 
Angela was also supposed to be his last movie, so he didn't. Wait, when, he didn't what, stop. what year was Angela? Two thousand five, I think. <laughs> I'm not uh, Angel. Angel A is wait. Angela. Okay, there's a dash here because she's an angel. Okay. He's French. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> uh, like that looks like it's the last good movie he did, though. I'm like, sure, but I mean the lady. I mean, like that was like two thousand five, and after that, it's like that's when you get Leon in nineteen eighty something. Oh yeah, La Femme Nikita. Big deal. But he, um, he hasn't made much good movies since the 90s. Sure. He's an old man now. But so, he's, he's a legend. And especially when it comes to cool action sequences and stuff. So I'm down to watch it. Okay, fair enough. I'm down to watch it. <laughs> I'll right. watch Anna. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. That he made it. Leon the Professional. And we can't just ignore all the other crap. Yeah, we can. He also <laughs> made Lucy. <laughs> he also made The Fifth Element. He also made Lucy. Yes. And uh, Ridley Scott's a terrible example. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Ridley Scott has made much worse shit than, than Luc Besson has. I mean, he's also made a lot more than Luc Besson has. Uh, I put Fifth Element above Blade Runner. The original Blade Runner is not a good movie. I like the fruit food, but I like the original. Rewatch it. I've seen it several times now. <laughs> when did you last watch it? Uh, a couple years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. It hasn't aged well. Fair enough. And Blade Runner 2049 is a superior movie in every respect. I do agree with that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can at least do that. <laughs> but I mean, Ridley Scott was legendary, and he's made not so legendary stuff recently, no. including the, one of the worst movies we've ever reviewed. <laughs> and Which we, one? Exodus. All right, I was thinking Ridley Alien. Scott made Exodus. I keep forgetting that. I was thinking Alien Covenant. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. It was, it was like a bad. four. It was a three. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, I'll do the fingering. What? That was a line in the movie. I forget. Um, <laughs> That's when Mike Fa Michael Fassbender literally jerks uh, himself off oh to boy. a flute. What? He said, uh, that's when it has like the, he's playing like David and Michael, whatever it is, and when it has like the flute, and then he goes, I've never, I've never done this before, and he goes, uh, you blow, I'll do the fingering. Okay. That's a line in David, in Alien Covenant. Okay, you fucking child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfucker, everyone made that joke. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that, no, I, I, I. There was no way that was not intentional. <laughs> I don't know. When I saw that movie, I didn't take it that way. Well, good for you. <laughs> because I was, I'm actually the kind of pretentious prick who's like, oh, he's teaching him how to make music. <laughs> and he's he's I, going like, you do the easy part, I'll show you how to do the complicated part. No one ever uses the term fingering to describe a flute. Are you sure? How many flautists do you know? How many do you know? A couple. Do they use the term fingering? I haven't talked to him about it in English. Do you tell him what you ask them and you get back to me. How about you just look it up? I don't. This feels like a. I'm not googling fingering. I'm not having the conversation that you're asking me to have with my great uncle. <laughs> so about fingering. <laughs> I feel like there's way too many uses of the word fingering in this review of Toy Story 4. Oh, pull my string. I'll do the fingering. <laughs> I, think, I think we're done here. Good night, everybody. Okay. <laughs>